we all want to make money if we're owning a business, right? But part of that owning a business is also not losing your money. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. With me on these wacky Wednesdays, we got Matt Jones. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing good, man. It's uh, So I've had the my two nieces here for the last uh, 10 days and their parents are coming home. Their parents went to Africa. They're coming home. So it's going to be a little quieter in my house. We've had 10 days of uh, four kids in the house versus just two and they're, they're two younger kids. It's been a lot of fun, but uh, man, world, it, give, it gives me a little insight about what my life would have been like with four kids and not two kids. It would have been a little bit busier. Mm. That's for sure. Yes, indeed. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm one of four kids, so I can relate to uh, that kind of household. Yeah. And this is only 10 days. Like this is, you know, uh, so yeah, I'm sure it would be even busier if they're actually my kids full time, but life's a little busy. So it, it's been fun though. Um, so Matt, anything new with you going on? Uh, not, I guess, I, you know, still underwriting, but, uh, I found a fun, uh, tip, I guess the other day about, um, you know, like when Menards has the 11% rebate, Home Depot, also secretly has an 11% uh, rebate as well. So if you have a, if you bought something from Home Depot recently, you can just Google Home Depot 11% rebate and then enter in your information and then they'll send you a, uh, you know, gift card for Home Depot uh, for that 11%. We'll send you a gift card. Yeah. Yeah. Either in the mail or through email, whichever you choose. Wow. I did not know that, that that was even a thing. Yeah. So those listening where Menards is, where Menards is, they can go ahead and do that anytime Menards, which they always have an 11%. Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah. I mean, it's almost never a day goes by that they don't have like a store-wide 11% off. Um, that's interesting. I, did, I didn't know that at all. So that's cool. Um, I I was going to uh, mention something. Now, these guys, I should we should get them as a sponsor on our uh our podcast, but one of my investors just said, Hey, do you know about this group? And I have heard about it and kind of know a little bit about it, but I thought it's kind of cool um, to tell our listeners because there's a lot of people that they don't know. I haven't done my research, so I should, I should maybe I'm, I'm selling this or talking about this too soon, but it's called Tribe Best. And uh, people don't have let's call it 50,000 or 100,000 minimum uh, to invest in a syndication, but they want to, maybe they get 10,000 or whatever. You can actually pool your money with a group of friends, family, and now you can invest in this deal. Or maybe you want to pool a lot of money together and you want to get to, maybe the deal said, the sponsors say, hey, if you come with a million dollars, you know, we, we will uh, give you a better split. So it's essentially creating your own little family office. So again, I, I need to dig in a little bit more, but uh, my investor sent this to me today and I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that, but it's called Tribe Vest. Uh, so it's just something for people to research, but I'll do some more digging and, and we can maybe talk a little bit more about it. But Sounds there's all good. kinds of cool tools, cool ways to invest in real estate. So many people think that you need to buy a duplex, single family home, that type of stuff. There's so many different opportunities out there uh, for people to buy them. There's a, a site called Acre Trader, you know, and, and you can buy farmland, um, but, you know, just to share a share of farmland. You, you know, obviously, there's syndications. We, uh, I do multifamily syndications. You want to get invested in multifamily, you can passively invest in one of our deals. Of course, we do have minimums, right? There's $50,000 minimum, but just a, a great way for people to get involved in real estate and be passive uh, without having to buy that stupid duplex that you probably don't want to buy anyways, but you just think that that's what you have to do. The returns are going to be not that great. You're going to have to put the work and effort into it. And now you got this duplex that you got to deal with. Yeah. And I think a lot of people start small. I, you know, that's why I started small because that's something that I could personally afford with my own personal money. Uh, to, right. You know, I could take a bite out of that. 
I didn't even realize that uh, syndication was a thing where people were pulling their money for bigger stuff. Yeah, I'm the same way. Had no clue. Had no clue that that was even a possibility. Just quite frankly, Matt, uh, for, for many years, even as I was a real estate investor, even as I was flipping a lot of houses and buying a lot of single family duplex, fourplex type rentals, I had no clue that I could put $50,000 into a multifamily syndication. Just just didn't even know that or, or any kind of syndication. Didn't have a clue that that was possible. Cool, cool. So anyways, what are we going to be talking about today, Matt? Well, we're going to be talking about doing things the right way to protect your assets. Yeah. Yeah, man. So I, we ha I have this conversation quite a bit with people and th there's so many different ways we can go ahead and do things. And I think a lot of people want to take the shortcut. They, they want to take the easy route. They or they just don't know. And so they're naive and they don't know the best way to do things. And they go about doing something the wrong way. And you're going to potentially get yourself into trouble, especially if a lawsuit arises. And maybe it's not that big of a deal if you own one single family home, you know, you don't, you don't have a lot to lose. But as you grow your portfolio, if you start bringing other people in, then it becomes a really big deal, Matt. And um, I, I was just talking with a gentleman the other day that's wanting to raise money for other people. And uh, he, he wants to, you know, raise a bunch of money and get paid to raise that money. And, and the way he was talking to me, I'm like, you know, look, I understand what you're trying to do, but you want to make sure you're protecting your future and your investors future. And the way you're talking about doing this is in my opinion, not legit. So you need to reach out to some attorneys. And, and this person was, you know, they were wanting to raise a bunch of money. They wanted to do a JV deal with the, with the people and, and buy, you know, a deal. And it, it doesn't, it, in my opinion, that's a syndication and you need to have a sponsor and you need to, you know, cause these are people that are passive raising money for people that are passive or from people that are passive. And then getting more of the deal because you're running the deal and taking fees and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, that smells like a syndication. And you want to make sure that you're doing things the right way. Well, syndication costs a lot more money to put together. Yes, it does. And a JV, you can get done for a thousand bucks or less. Okay, but a syndication is going to cost you $5,000 to, to $10,000 to do. They didn't want to put that money up there. And they, well, you know, it's just a small group of people that I know really well. Okay, that sounds great. You know them really well. It's a small group of people. And I don't care if it's one person or it's 10 people. It still smells like a syndication. You got passive investors. Are you doing it right? So and the other thing I hear a lot is people that want to raise money for other syndications, right? I'm going to raise money for this other syndication. If I raise $500,000, I'll get paid you know, 3%. If I raise a uh, million dollars, I'll get paid 6%. If I raise 1.5, I'm going to get paid 9%. Well, you're getting paid based on the amount of money you raised. Do you know that's illegal? Unless, Unless you're a dealer. You're a broker. Yeah. Right. Bro broker dealer. So, you know, the, these are just a couple of examples, a couple of recent examples of people I've had conversations with, but there's so many things that we can do in real estate or business in general that can really be uh, putting us in jeopardy. And we wanna make sure that we're not putting ourselves in jeopardy. Yeah, and so let's say somebody puts together an illegal syndication, you know, they, they label it as a JV, but it's really a syndication. What could happen if the SEC catches wind of that? Yeah, I mean, all kinds of fines, right? You can get, you can get fined for not doing it right. You didn't file properly. Um, you know, a lawsuit could happen too. That's maybe the bigger deal than fines is so if a lawsuit happens, you didn't set things up right. Now you're piercing a corporate veil and now you're personally liable for whatever, you know, let's just say you get a $20 million lawsuit on your hands. And all of a sudden you got all this capital out there that, man, I mean, they're going after you personally because you didn't set things up the proper way, 
right? To pierce the corporate veil. Uh, and that's, that's something that there's many ways to pierce the corporate veil. We had um, Garrett Sutton on that talked about that. There's, there's lots of different ways we can do that. And so you want to make sure that, you know, you got good attorneys, you got good counsel. Um, but a lawsuit could happen from one of the partners, Matt. Uh, that's another thing, right? If, if, if something goes south and a lawsuit happens and you didn't set it up right. So the SEC is, I think, one, per, one group that you should be thinking about. But I also think you should be thinking about everything else, too. So can the SEC come after you? Can they find you? Can they, will they slap you on the wrist? We'll see. But could other lawsuits happen? Could, you know, that now you're at real risk. Yeah, I think it's uh, worth the extra time, money and effort to do things the right way in the first place. Yeah, so just do it the right way. And I, I understand and I look, I did JVs, Matt, but I was so naive, I didn't know. And now, but the problem is with not saying, well, I'm naive and I didn't know is that, well, why didn't you know? You know, that's a terrible excuse. The The thing is, why didn't you do the research? Why didn't you hire the right counsel? Well, I was naive and I didn't know because I didn't want to spend the money on counsel. I didn't want to know. And that's a terrible answer, Right. And that was early on, um, you know, and, and, and I've definitely, now I look at things. So, so some of your, like your risk mitigation and being, you know, you look, we all want to make money, Matt. I think so. Do you want to make money? Absolutely. Okay. So we all want to make money if we're owning a business, right? But part of that owning a business is also not losing your money. Right. And so, do things the right way instead of trying to be cheap and save money. That, that, that's where I, you know, maybe didn't do things the right way early on is that I was too concerned about making the money, not concerned about keeping the money. And I got lucky, I would say for the most part, <laughs> kids in the background <laughs> running around. Um, but you know, look, it, it's, uh, it's way smarter to build it the right way in the first place and to make sure, especially look, look, I, I, I wasn't taking the investors that I'm taking right now. So it's different too. Right. But especially now, like I've got a lot of investors, I've got to do things the right way. I have to make sure I'm double, triple, quadruple checking. We hire good counsel. We review everything in detail. We have other counsel cross-referencing our, our documents to make sure that everything is legit and set up the right way. So it's not just one person saying, this is the way you should do things. No, it's multiple people telling us, yep, this is the correct way to do things. We want to make sure we're doing it right because we've got lots of investors that we're putting their money at risk if we do it wrong. Plus, we've got our own business interest that we're putting at risk if we do it wrong. We've built something. We want to keep it. We want to preserve it. It takes a lot of effort, Matt, to build a big, not even big, I mean, a moderate sized company, small sized company, quite frankly. It takes a lot of effort to build a company. Why put it at risk for failure just because you're too lazy. Yeah. Speaking of lazy, let's say I, I was lazy and, and I, well, let's say I did things the right way with one deal. And then I just carbon copied the paperwork over to the next deal and just changed the name of the deal and the money and all that. Uh, you know, what, what's the risk in doing that? Um, I, I, I mean, the risk is that a, the first one wasn't right. Now, obviously that would be the easiest, you know, answer to that. But B is if the second deal needs any anything different, right? It needs different words or different protections, or um, you know, um, I, you know, any 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 little changes, or anything that you miss. So yeah, do a lot of people want a template to to work off of? And oh, I can copy this template and use it and 
boom, I'm good. Now I don't need to hire legal counsel. I got it myself because I'm using, you know, the previous, ah, sure. You know, but again, you're taking a big risk that everything's right. And that every time you edit that you're editing exactly how it should be. Um, and the other nice thing, Matt, if I've got legal counsel and they represent in lawsuits, which I want to make sure my legal counsel represents in lawsuits and defends their clients, that's super important. If I've got that, I've got legal counsel that will defend their client. I want them to defend me if we have something going on. If the SEC audits and says, hey, guys, this doesn't look right, I want my legal counsel to step in and say, this is why it's right. Here it is. I don't want my legal counsel to go, hey, look, uh, we didn't do that. We can't, we can't help you here. Or yeah, we can help you, but it's going to cost you. You know, legal counsel, if if you've got the right one, they're going to step in, they're going to defend themselves in their own contracts. You know, you get sued from somebody else. Again, they, they want to defend their own contracts. Make sure that you have a good attorney that's going to be able to do that and willing to do that. Um and won't charge you extra to defend their own contract, but, but yeah. Uh, and, and again, that's case by case, but no, that makes I think a lot the of other sense. thing, sorry, go ahead, Matt. I was just saying that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think the other thing is you want to make sure you have the right counsel. Okay. So general counsel is general, but we have, very special counsel, specialty counsel. So for securities, I wanted to use a securities attorney, right? Somebody who is well-versed in SEC rules. So I want a securities attorney. If I'm doing real estate title work, I want an attorney that specializes in title work. If I'm just setting up a simple JV partnership, I want an attorney that specializes in business entity setups. Now, what happens if I need some advice? Okay. I think the best answer to that is you speak with several attorneys to try to get that advice and potentially you get them on the phone together. Now, that's an advantage of working with a decent sized law firm, not necessarily massive, right? But a decent sized law firm that will have that securities attorney that'll have that general law that'll have the real estate, right? That'll have the titles, uh, all that kind of stuff, business entity set up. So if you work with one of those firms, now you can go, Hey guys, here's the scenario. What do we think? Let's put our heads together. We come up with the right answer. And they can say, hey, you know, Matt, what you're doing, what you want to do actually needs to be done this way versus the way you're thinking about doing it. And this is why, right? So I think that's so valuable. And people, again, people want to be cheap. And I, I, I get it. Like, I want to be cheap too. But one of the biggest lessons I learned was uh, with contract law. I had a house that I sold. And I've told this story before, but I sold this house and uh, these, uh, you know, these people bought this house and, and the contract was that they were, I was going to, my company was going to fix this, the house up, renovate it for them. And so we came up with the whole renovation scope and plan and, and signed a loosely written contract that I, I quite frankly, got off the internet and uh, edited myself. And so they signed that. We signed that together. And then we had all kinds of change orders. And they would say, I want, we want this done. We want this done. We want this done. And most of the change orders were in a text form, text message form or an email form. And at the end of the day, the project finished and they said, we're not paying for these extras. It was like $50,000 worth of extras or something like that. They said, we're not paying for these extras. So well, yeah, you are. Like, what are, you, what are you talking about? We have this all in writing. No, nope, we never agreed to any of this stuff. We just told you we wanted it. We didn't agree to paying for it. <laughs> and so that ended up in a, in a law legal battle. And ultimately, because I didn't have anything really truly in writing, uh, we ended up, I ended up losing a lot of money on it. 
and between attorney fees and all that kind of stuff, it, uh, I ended up losing about $70,000 Ouch! out of the deal. So, and that's because I didn't use contracts. Simple. I didn't use legal advice and contracts and didn't set things up the right way. And that was really the last time that I allowed that to happen to me. You paid for a $70,000 education on that. Yeah, that's uh, exactly $70,000 education. Right. So, you know, it, uh, it is what it is. I, 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 but that's the last time I decided I'm not using the right legal counsel and I'm not, I, I now will always use legal counsel for everything. Yeah. I mean, granted, now, it could, could be a lot worse. I mean, I've heard of people losing a lot more money than that too. hundred percent. You know? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. It's easy. It's easy. But anything you do needs to be in writing. Um, I think there's, there's a couple of reasons for this, you know, so we're talking about protecting your assets, per, setting up your business the right way, doing things the right way. Um, you know, first of all, doing things the right way is just honest and ethical, right? We want to do things the right way. We want to run our businesses properly and professionally because that's just the right thing to do. Um, but it also protects you, protects your investors, protects people around you, right? And and so I think that's, you know, there's there's some value to, obviously there's some major value to that. Again, like I said, we're building these big businesses. Let's do it the right way so we don't lose our, our shirts on it. Um, I don't know where I was going with that, Matt, but that that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's okay. super, super important, so. Yep. All right. Anything or anything else we can do to protect our assets? Um, yeah, I mean, we've talked to attorneys, but again, it's, it's, a, it's all about the team, the right team that's around you. So we, we talked a lot attorneys, we beat, we, you know, beat that in the ground, but do you have the right CPAs? Look here, here I'll tell you a perfect, a, a beautiful story here. This is uh, very frustrating. I had a CPA uh, very recently um, and, and I, you know, won't give any names out, but I had a CPA very recently. First of all, I should have kind of knew that I needed to get more advice because uh, it just didn't feel right. But uh, this CPA told me we bought a property uh, at the very end of the year. And the CPA said, well, look, at the end of the year, this is going to be really difficult to get the, the tax returns in. So let's just push that off until next year. And I went, are you sure we can do that? And he said, oh, absolutely do that all the time. I'm like, okay, you know, that it seems, I did tell him that, like, it seems odd. He's like, nope, nope, we can do it. So I said, okay. Well, then one of my investors, uh, after I, I say that a couple months later, he goes, hey, I, I should have said something earlier, but, it, you know, just kind of blew it off. But I don't think you can legally not file these taxes. I said, what do you mean? You know, he says, well, I'm a CPA. I'm not practicing, but I'm a CPA and, or he's not practicing tax law. I guess he's, he's works for a company and he's like, this is not, you can't do this. So I started reaching out to other CPAs and figured out that what the CPA told me was in fact incorrect. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, do you have the right CPA? You have a CPA that actually knows what he's doing, that's specialized in what you're doing, and that can handle what you have. The other thing that we had this year that was frustrating, and now this is not necessarily putting us at any kind of jeopardy, but it, it frustrates us and our, our um, investors, is uh, we had our K-1s not done on time. And so at the end of the year, you know, you get these, you got your financials you, and you send your investors K-1s uh, mid-March. Well, ours didn't come in on time and our CPA kept on telling us, we'll get them done, we'll get them done, we'll get them done. And then they said, we'll get them done by this date. Okay, well, we tell our investors, hey, you know, look, they'll be coming in by this date. It keeps it on site. If we get them done by this date. All of a sudden, we get an email said, "Well, we'll get them done by June 1st. We're like, 
like, well, wait a second. They're like, this is the, like, the day you're supposed to have them in. And you tell us now it's June 1st. So we have to go to our investors and tell our investors, like, they're not coming in and, and we might not see them until June 1st. Well, that makes us look stupid. Mm -hmm. that, that reflects upon us because we had been telling our investors that we're getting them in any day now and we don't get them in. And yet it's not even that they're a couple of days late. It's that they're potentially a couple months late. Now, luckily, happily, they came in earlier than June 1st, but still, it just it just shows that we are, it doesn't look very professional. So do you have the right people in place? Now we've hired a new company. We've done a ton of research on them. They've got their larger company. They're not massive. They're not the biggest of the big, but they are a good size company. And we feel very confident in their ability to get our returns done on time and our returns done the right way. Um, and, and, you know, they've got a team, which is great. And they can review our attorney stuff and our attorney can review theirs. And, and so we cross reference and it goes the same with our property management company, our contractors, the whole works. We want to have the right team in place, Matt. Awesome. And do you find the, the right CPA just through referrals or, or some other means? Yeah, I mean referrals. Uh, their hit. Look at their history. What you know. Look at their the size of their team. Look at the ability of their team. You know this this CPA firm has divisions, so it has a real estate division, but it also has other divisions as well. Well, that makes me feel good because we can bounce ideas off of the other divisions. They can pull from one division to the other if they need to. Um, and so it's a sizable firm. They've got offices located uh, in several different spots around the country. Um, and so, yeah, they're a very reputable company. Now, the other thing that they do that a lot of people, it's funny, we were just talking with another uh, syndication group and, and uh, we were talking about the CPA decision we made. And, and uh, they said, we could never use them. They said, they're just... They just do things too black and white, right? We need a CPA that does, that plays in the gray area, and I get that because we don't want to pay we don't want to pay taxes if we don't have to. But we've, in my opinion, gotten to the size of where we just want to be really careful about playing in the gray area, right? We want to make sure I don't want to pay more taxes than I have to, and I want to have good counsel that's going to allow me to avoid taxes, but I also want to make sure we're not playing too much in the gray area because eventually we're going to get audited, Matt, and we're going to have to defend playing in the gray area. So I want to make sure whatever gray we play in, we can easily defend it. Yeah, that's another good point about protecting your assets. Like, uh, you know, there's plenty of money to be made in real estate by just following the law. Like, you don't have to break the law to make yep. money. You can. The laws are in favor of real estate ownership. Yeah, absolutely. And as, as much of a pain as sometimes they can be, they're there for a reason. And you know what, whether you like them or don't like them, they're there. So just follow them. I, look, I hate the law that says you have to be accredited in order to invest in my deals, or I can only take 35 non-accredited. I think that's a stupid law, but it's there. I'm going to follow it. And I'm going to only take 35 non-accredited investors who I have a pre-existing relationship with. That's just how I'm going to do it. But is it stupid? In my opinion, it's very stupid. You're telling me that somebody that has $960,000 in the bank account is somehow not as smart as somebody who has a million and one dollar in their bank account. You know, that seems silly, but it is what it is. And we have to follow the rule. Yep. All right. Uh, anything else we might have missed? Yeah, I'm sure plenty. But just uh, the, the main theme is, look, make sure you're doing things the right way. Build it, build it big, build it great, but build it the right way. So you protect your assets, you protect your investors' money if you're taking investors. Um, and, and so and you're not hurting anybody around you. you. There's no point to spend all this time and energy to build something and to have it done the wrong way. Very good. I'm all in favor of that. Cool, man. Well, you have a fantastic rest of the day. Make every day Saturday. Hey, you too.
Hey, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being a loyal listener. Say, I would love to have you go on to our Facebook page and subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Go on to iTunes or wherever you listen and give us a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe. But your rating and review just helps us push this out to more and more people and continue to grow our audience and hopefully positively affect a ton of people out there that really need this and, and want this. So uh, the other thing I've got for you is a free ebook on my website. So go on to VentureDProperties.com, VentureDProperties.com and download our free ebook uh, on real estate and on syndication. And I've got some data points in there, some really good stuff for you. So I'd love to have you take a look at that. It's free. I'm not expecting anything from it. Uh, and, and also look, if you want some help in multifamily, want some help learning, growing, getting your business off the ground, I would love to talk to you about what it would look like uh, to work with me potentially and see if that's a good fit. So you can go up to coachwithdex.com and check that out and uh, we can definitely have a, uh, a call. Thanks a lot for listening. You make it a fantastic rest of the day. I'll catch you on the next episode.